Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the brand new KZ Planar. It is the PR1 Pro. Not to be confused with the PR1 Hi-Fi that we did last time. This is the Pro and it is actually an upgraded driver and upgraded tuning. So that is where we will begin. And here is what it looks like up close. And I think it actually looks like the PR1 standard, right? I think PR1 Hi-Fi was all in metal. This one is the metal faceplate and the kind of resin shell. Also new are these KZ foam tips and I highly suggest using the foam tips. I believe they tuned it with the foam tips. I believe that was their intention was for people to use the foam tips as it is the only tips that are included in this package. And this is the KZ eight core cable. It is a nice SPC cable. For those of you who may have purchased the ZES or some of the flagships from last year, I think this is the same eight core cable that was used on those. So again, nice upgraded tips, nice upgraded cable. The box is still going to be their minimal box. So don't expect that to change anytime soon. So I just wanted to give you, it's not a whole lot to talk about on a graph other than I wanted to give you a frame of reference and things that I talk about when I talk about the original planar sound. That is very much the timeless. It is the one that sort of started planar wars. I know it's not the first planar. Lots of sets came before, but the one that really kicked off this generation and a reference that people use for this type of sound, I think you have to point to timeless. And when we look at it, you know, it is really close up until what, about 2K. And don't get too caught up with KZ's little boosted treble level. Planers have this thing where they can absorb lots of bass, they can absorb lots of treble, and they don't particularly act like balanced armatures or even dynamic drivers when you take the levels up 2 or 3 dB. They tend to be able to absorb those. And, and what to notice about this is it's actually more, not, it's not perfectly linear, but... It's not as peaky as timeless, and it actually comes off that way as well. So I think reading planar graphs is really difficult, and I don't. I tend to not talk about them too much for that particular reason, because even if we were to look at the channels separated out, you, they'd probably be closer and be more overlapping than, the, than they are looking at the average. So I tend to not dive too deeply into them, but the fact that you have it pretty similar and they both sort of arc over into this linear downslope through the treble the same way that KZ does. They sound of they sort of have similar levels in that respect. So let's jump right into it. We've got lots and lots to cover here. So I will begin and say this kind of congrats to KZ. This is the KZ planner that they really promised up front. This is the one that you know is in the game with S12 and Timeless. The first two KZ would talk a lot about the quality of their driver and how good the driver is and it's 13 millimeters and the manufacturing process, spec, spec, specs, lots and lots of talk, but they didn't tune it to the to a point where people would compare it to S12 and Timeless. So PR1 Pro is that set that finally combines, you know, a very high quality driver that KZ developed and a tuning that is in the game with S12 and Timeless. And I don't People nitpick these and say one is better than the other. It's S12 and Thomas are better than Pro. For me, I don't think that actually matters. I think the biggest win for KZ was getting in the game to be able to compete with those and do it at a price that, you know, this was released with that promo at $40. It's going to be $65 on discount, it looks like, for Black Friday. So, sure, it's half the price of S12 and you know, quite a significantly different from Timeless, and maybe it doesn't beat those two, but the fact that you have to think for quite a while to say which parts of Timeless are better than Pro, I think that is that is very much mission accomplished for KZ. They are right there in the game. Next year is going to be very interesting when they take this version of the driver and refine it and refine the tuning. Um, they are going to be, you know, some pretty stiff competition for these guys, especially at their price point. So why is it special? I think this one is, for KZ especially, it's the wrecking ball. Just as we talked about with Timeless, when that first came out, Timeless was $200 competing with sets that were, you know, hybrids in the $300, $400. It's not really clear, you know, where the Timeless or the planar technicalities end when you compare it to hybrids. And when you look at 
PR1 Pro, it's sort of a wrecking ball through most of KZ's portfolio, right? Sets like this, sets that I talked about that I didn't really like to begin with, but HM20, you know, what's that? It's a 7 plus 1 hybrid. This is a dynamic driver. Yeah, you know, this is sort of KZ's past, and they will maintain these, but this is really their future. And when they got this tuning to the point where it was as balanced and better balanced than this guy, you sort of have to wonder why these are going to exist. And I did ask the question, and the answer is actually pretty simple. Planar is KZ's future, but that future is still kind of expensive. And even at $65, even at $80, that is a little more expensive than KZ's typical product. So you're still going to see them maintain that that bottom end, the really affordable sets, but there has to be a real big concentration on their future, which is going to be their planar sets. And as I said, KZ just found their balance of that fun sound that they need and showcasing driver capabilities. That was the bit that was always missing from PLA 13 and even PR1 Hi-Fi. You know, it just wasn't a driver showcase. They talked about it and it had good specs, but as far as tuning wise, it was really hard to pick out where that set uh, that driver sounds better than any other set and PR1 Pro you know there's no real fault here there's a lot there's some room to improve and as we go into 2023 there's some things that they can refine but you know there's no real hardcore faults as we have as you had in PLA 13 or even PR1 Hi-Fi so why that is why it's special so why is it not special especially if you have other planars, right? If you have an S12 or a Timeless already, I don't think it's as much detail as Timeless, maybe with better tips and you can kind of tweak it a little bit. Maybe you'll get there on on, on detail. It's not as natural as Talos, Talos and Panda. I think those guys were tuned in a way to make them sound a little more natural. That is not what KZ did here. Better than Michael Bruce's hand tune S12? Uh, no, because Michael focuses on something that we'll talk about later, the 5%. When I talk about the 5% here and the 5% here, that last bit of tuning that audiophiles care about and reviewers care about, Michael Bruce is a master at that bit, and KZ is sort of right up here, finding the right balance of fun for their large global audience and you know showcasing a driver. So different uh, methodologies there but uh, so not special but i think the special and the the accomplishment there i think is actually more important than than a lot of the nitpicks that i'm going to talk about now so who should buy it uh, anyone who wants a full planar sound at an affordable price like i said it looks like it's about 65 dollars at some places on uh, black friday we'll see where the discount actually ends up but this is a set that I would buy PR1 Pro today. It is that um, kind of that uh, gateway drug to, and I talk about that later somewhere else, but as an introduction to the planar hype, understanding what people were talking about with Timeless, that is what this set is. It's, the, it's you're very much an intro, intro to planar and planar sound. So anyone who wants that sound at an affordable price, buy it today uh, and then wait for the sets next year. I wouldn't chase too many rainbows after buying PR1 Pro. It's it's really close enough. And you'll you'll be tempted to say, wow, this planar sounds really amazing. Maybe KZ took some shortcuts. Maybe the driver isn't as capable as it is the other two or three. Um, I would say don't don't chase those rainbows. This one is, is gonna be close enough for you and wait to see what comes out next uh, rather than trying to find something incrementally better and paying a lot of money to to take that trip. It's not it's not worth it. Sound, I'll say this one sounds like KZ made a planner, right? It's the V-shape from PLA 13, even PR1, but in balance. KZ has in the past done very balanced V-shape tunings. Sometimes they kind of go off schedule and it's not as balanced, but, and even those two are pretty good examples of that. But this one is... KZ doing what they do best and a balanced V-shape. So don't expect a neutral style tuning. Don't expect neutral anything. It's going to be a little boosted on both ends. So bass-wise, this one is slightly heavy. It's it's timeless level like we talked about, but that really gives you the right body, the right tactile bass for a planar. 
the planars like Talos, which are a little light on bass, you know, I think they don't really do it for me. They don't give you a kind of full range sound. They don't work across all the genres. You really need something that's a little slightly heavier. And as I said, planars can absorb even a higher level of bass and do it very well. KZ's planar is, is the same. KZ could have dropped it a couple dB, but, you know, this is that balanced, fun versus quality bass that KZ really needed to deliver and that people are expecting. So when you go back to your test tracks, 326 on Why So Serious by Hans Zimmer, not even breaking a sweat as a planner should do. So for those of you who think that their driver is a little different or not as maybe slightly inferior to other drivers, it's, it's actually not. It does, it behaves just like other planners do. The tuning is slightly different, but the kind of core functionality, and I talked about it with PLA 13 and even PR1, when you EQ'd their driver down to something similar to the other sets, you hear the exact same planar capabilities that you get on others, or it's at least close enough. So again, that track, 326, it'll vibrate your ears just like any other planar will and should. So as I said, a nice intro to planar bass characteristics. If you're not, if you, this is your first planar, you'll get a very good intro to what those, how much bass um, a planar can actually do and how impactful it can really be and how tactile it can be. So the mids, again, it's really hard to hit pick, to, to nitpick when you've got this big full bass on one side and a really extended treble on the other side. They really set the mids up for success. And that's really what kind of comes through here. But when you want to hear that last 5% that differentiated to more expensive planars, these are some of the nitpicks. So it does sound a hair recessed and maybe a little less detailed compared to more forward planars. So that comes down to a preference thing. If you've listened to other planar sets that are just a hair more forward, Maybe that sounds a little more natural to you. Maybe that sounds a little more unnatural to you. It's kind of forced detail, a little more forward. So I actually think KZ did a pretty good job here. But if you're looking for that 5% of detail that may exist on S12 and Timeless, it's not going to be there. It's just set back a little bit. So I, yeah, I, I think it's more of a preference as opposed to I would rather not have forced detail because it tends to be a little more fatiguing depending on how they did it. And that, that's really what comes through on S12. So raising levels doesn't mean more detail and texture. And that's sort of what happened on this set. Um, it's kind of KZ is really caught up on extension, right? We have this great extension, so we're going to give it a nice big level. So it's very clear that we we can do treble very very well, but they tend to, that tends to oversaturate the sound, and you sort of lose the finer micro dynamics, if that's what you call it, if you call it texture. But there's just sort of this planar sheen that's over a lot of the vocal textures and, and specific notes and. That is a very much a super nitpick, but you can hear it in the tuning that it's just slightly over where it should be if you listen to other sets. Um, but uh, again, close enough, that is a super nitpick. So it may not win that detail and texture award, but this is a great balance of fun bass and mids that are still presenting great planner characteristics. And that's really the more important part is rather than nitpicking, it is that KZ actually delivered on what they said they would, and they can still maintain their fun sound, but still have a planer that sounds like a planer, and that's exactly what PR1 Pro does. And what KZ does very, very well, visceral impact, and this is where Talos sort of fell down for me. When you go, when you step beyond bass, mids, treble, when you step beyond tuning and take a step back and say, does this set actually move me? Does it create emotion? You know, does it make me feel something? KZ is very good at visceral impact. And this set is really no different. And it took them to three tries to get the balance to the point where tracks like my favorite tracks, The Unforgiven or Detroit Rock City by Kiss, Big Mouth Strikes Again by The Smiths, Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden, Ready to Go, Republica, Kanye West Power, Tori Amos Cornflake. You know, the sets that, the tracks that are not necessarily my test tracks I listen to them, but I wouldn't necessarily call them test tracks. But the tracks that I listen to in the car, the tracks that I listen to when I'm out doing the yard work, those tracks that I'm very familiar with and love and need to move me on certain sets, 
that is what, what PR1 Pro did very, very well. That visceral impact is probably more important than most everything else on this paper because Casey in the past has actually done it very well. And to hear it done on a planar, you know, that same V-shape that Casey does, that high energy, very engaging sound that Casey has, you know, they really nailed that that bit. And like I said, it it sort of a wrecking ball to Talos. Talos was this sort of boring small set. And then you listen to PR1 Pro and it's everything that you had wanted in Talos, but delivered, you know, by a different company. So treble, as I said, not as bright as it looks on the, especially with foam tips on the graph. I think KZ chose right by leaving it slightly higher with the foam tips. I think that tuning and these tips, that was all very intentional. And I'm pretty sure that the guy tuned it with the foam tips. So I, again, I sort of highly recommend the foam tips. You may say, I want more detail and I don't like foam tips and all that, but I would stick with the foam tips. And what is no so noticeable from previous KZ planners, that treble may be elevated, but it's more even. You don't have the bright spots. There's no bright spots for fatigue, and it absorbs volume like no other KZ set. Again, planar capabilities, bass, treble extension, volume scaling, all these things that planars do very, very well. This one does it as well. And volume scaling, this thing can get very, very loud. Some planar sheen to it. Like I said, it's not really tuned for the most natural set like a Talos, so there is some sheen to it. And personally, I would lower it, um, just the treble just a little bit to make it a little more easier to hear the detail and to make it a little more linear in its response. But, you know, as far as delivering the planar experience, I think KZ, I did, I'm glad that KZ didn't really try to hide that planar bit to it because I think it, it does reach back to the original feeling that I had with Timeless and delivering that planar experience. So I'm glad they didn't try to dampen that out. But the last 5%, if you take a track like Dave Brubeck's Take 5, 2 minutes, 11 seconds, those symbols, you know, they're just a little bit too bright, a little bit too energetic. They don't really decay as far as they really should. So they're not quite as natural as they sound. The level is a bit high. The decay isn't as it should be. But again, that is a sort of top of the line, very mid-fi uh, concept. And and again, PR1 Pro comes really close and they could probably get there if they, if they tuned it again. But, you know, if you want to know how far PR1 Pro is from some high-end sets, you know, this is just slightly off. And and I mean just slightly. It's it's actually really, really good. And most people are probably not going to notice. But um, if you heard a Michael Bruce set, you'll kind of get that feeling from it. So stage. And again, this is where I would have chosen that slightly less treble level just to give it a little more depth. It's um, sometimes, and it's hard to tell on this set if that's really the case. Timeless had the same thing, right? It gets a little flatter. And this one isn't really all that flat. And I think dropping the treble level may have make it feel a little more deeper, but I think the width and the height are, are great. Maybe lowering the treble level will give you a little more depth, but what's sort of more striking about it is rather than depth forward, you get a lot of instruments and a lot of notes that are behind your ears. So you do have depth, but it tends to be, your head tends to be centered. It's more of an immersive feeling where there is some depth and some forwardness to it but then there is some back to it so you're sort of sitting in the middle of uh, a bunch of instruments and not a lot of sets do it that way but this one tends to sound uh, very much like that so i do think it, it sounds properly big and lots of uh, congrats to them for keeping the stage from pr1 hi-fi not messing with it too much because that one was was also done quite well so that is what I got on PR1 Pro. So again, thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time.